our society eats so much junk food that when we eat real food, people think we're on a diet. <laughs> so ask yourself, how much junk food or fast food or processed food are you consuming on a day-to-day -day basis? So what is fast food? Well, here's another question. What is real food? We want to talk about what is fast food and we want to talk about what our culture has deemed fast food to be. We want to talk about what processing food actually means and looks like because those are terms that we just throw out, but half the time we don't actually have an understanding of what it means to talk about processed food. So we're going to talk about that today. And then we're going to talk about how to incorporate real food back into your life without being on a diet because eating fruits and vegetables and real foods that are not processed does not mean you're on a diet. That's right, because we're not on diet. No, and I want to say, if you've been here before listening, you'll know that we don't believe in diets, but we believe that it is possible to lose weight without being on a diet and we are living proof. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I'm just going to say it's possible to lose weight without counting points, calories, carbs, macros, or anything. So if you're sick and tired of that, stick around. Exactly. And without eliminating any food groups. That's right. Which is the other best part. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you're new here, we're Ruth and Casey. We're a mother-daughter team. And we're just going to ask right now, before we dive into this topic, please give us a thumbs up. And subscribe. Because yeah. that really, truly helps the algorithm know who to spread this content out to. But so what is fast food? I'm going to say when, when I think of fast food, I immediately think of McDonald's drive through Wendy's drive through Burger King, KFC, Taco Bell. I don't know. There's so many <laughs> yeah. today. And we live in Canada and we have far less than those of you in the United States. <laughs> so what do you think of when you hear fast food? I'm sure you think the same thing as we do. But fast food does not have to be the fast stores. food restaurant. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are many ways for us to make fast foods in our homes. Uh, but what we really want to talk about before we get to that is that our culture here has really put a focus on the need for convenience in terms of what we eat. But we want to tell you that that does not have to mean that you're going through a drive through multiple times per day or week. There's other ways for us to find convenience through real food in a fast way. And That's so right. let's talk a little bit for a minute about what, what actually is fast food when we're going to the restaurants like McDonald's or Wendy's, yeah. right? What, what is that food? So it's burgers, fries, chicken and ribs. It's um, bags of potato chips with a sandwich. Like if you go to Subway, mm -hmm. it's, uh, what else is it? It's mostly fried food. Yeah, well, and really what we wanted to talk about in terms of that is that it's processed food. It's very, very highly processed food for the most part. There's a few options out there that maybe are not so processed, but processed foods is one of those topics that we say those words all the time, but what does it actually mean? Okay, I just wanna add, when we say real food, I want to say food that God has provided for us, okay? So when you think of fast food, the food has been altered so much that there's hardly anything real in it anymore. And that is a whole bunch of processes that have been done to food. So a really easy example for us to think about when we talk about processed foods is this right here. This is a real food. It's an apple and God created apples for us to really enjoy and they're tasty and delicious and they're filled with good nutrients. This has not been altered at all, right? This is in its natural state. You pick it off the tree and this is what it looks like. So you know now what we mean when we say unaltered food. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been processed. But a very simple process to do to this apple would be to cook it down and make applesauce. You can do that in your home. That right? heat and it is a process altering the apple. Mm -hmm. You don't have to add anything else to it to do that process, which makes that process really not a bad process to do to this food. It does take some of the nutrients out, but it's still a good option. Right. Another thing that you could do with that is you could slice it up and freeze it. Freezing is another altered process. State of the food. Yeah, state yeah. of the food. But it's not necessarily bad. Exactly. In fact, you haven't added anything to it. So it's still in its natural form, but you've done a process. You've frozen it. So now let's talk about a burger from somewhere like McDonald's. Well, if you think about, let's just talk strictly about the bun. Okay? Yeah. Wow. What is the <laughs> natural, real food that exists that created that bun? Well, there's quite a few, but one of the main ones is flour. Right? But if you think about the food growing in its natural state, 
The, um, the bun looks a whole lot different than a stock of wheat. Wheat. So think about the processes that are done to that wheat and then all of the other ingredients that are added. Some of them maybe aren't bad in and of themselves, but but we, there is so much. There's an over an, an indulgent amount, overindulgent amount of processed ingredients that have gone into that bun. So that if you put that bun on the counter, it's going to stay looking like it's fresh for multiple days. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how long. And but, that, a big reason for that is because part of the process of making that bun is adding a bunch of chemicals to it. And preservatives that are going to keep it lasting and looking delicious forever. Well, you know what? That is not normal. Because if you make your own bun with hardly any ingredients in it, it's way healthier because it doesn't have all those preservatives and extra ingredients that you don't need. But it is going to go moldy if you leave it on the counter for just a few days. Mm -hmm. And if you leave it on the counter, it's going to go stale. It's right. Like it's, it's real yeah, food. There's right. lots of processes that maybe have been done to it. If you make it at home yourself, but it's a lot better than the fast food restaurant versions that have all these added processes and added chemicals and added preservatives that make it into, it's still food. You can still consume it. Your body still uses it for energy, but it's not a great source of fuel for your body. No. So all, when we talk about processed junk, because not all processed food is bad, like we just explained. So if we, that's why we say there's so much processed junk and the junk is all the stuff that actually harms your body. Mm -hmm. They are not beneficial to your body. And that is all the extra sugars that are put some of the ingredients into all this processed food. There's preservatives, there's food colorings, uh, there's maltodextrin, there's just so much sodium. There are so many added ingredients that are not healthy for our bodies. Another really easy example to talk about that's a little bit easier even than the bun is like a bag of potato chips. It's easier to think, okay, that bag of potato chips is made from a potato, right? That's the ingredient that those potatoes are derived, that the chips are derived from. But think about how many processes and how many ingredients are added to those potato chips. Even if you think about the flavorings alone, mm, that's right. that have a wow. bunch of preservatives, a bunch of chemicals. And think about this way, a bag of potato chips, like a regular size bag, you and I could probably both sit down and polish off an entire bag of potato chips and not feel full like that, right? You don't feel full. You even feel like you could probably go open another one, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> think about, there's probably four to six, like, medium to large potatoes in that bag. Now think about if you really minimally processed those potatoes and you boiled them on the stove in your kitchen, you didn't add anything to it. Could you sit down and eat four to six medium to large potatoes in one sitting? No, it kind of Absolutely gross you out. not. Yeah. yeah. And so that right there tells you how much the, the food is altered and how many chemicals and ingredients are added that just make us eat more and more and more. And they don't, like they're not doing anything good in our bodies. No, absolutely. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about processed junk food. Mm -hmm. And it might be fast food, but it is harming our bodies. And we need to start to change the definition of fast food because we can get healthy fast food mm -hmm. right in our own kitchen. Exactly. There's even some pretty decent healthy options at restaurants these days that have so much less processing involved That's right. that actually do helpful things for your body, right? We often talk about like foods either help or harm your body, right? Some of them are helpful because they have lots of good nutrients and, and they give us energy and all of those things. Some of them are actually harmful because they have all these chemicals, they have all these processes and like I said earlier, sure, your body uses that for fuel, but it's not a good source of fuel. And you'll know that because if you've eaten a meal like that recently or too much junk, you don't feel well after the fact. I'm right? going to say also, you know, when you eat just a, a regular size, not a super size, a regular size, you're not even remotely full. Mm -hmm. You feel like you need the super size to fill you up because it's not giving your body the fuel it needs. And we often talk about fuel for your body, mm -hmm. but that process stuff doesn't really satiate us. It, we want more and more and it causes our cravings so that we want to go back to the convenience fast food of the processed junk. So I think the major thing that we want to transition to now is that as a culture, we need to learn to shift back 
to what real food can look like in fast, convenient ways. Because that's right. You know, our lives aren't going to change and be less busy all of a sudden tomorrow just because we want to try and lose weight and eat healthier. <laughs> no, right. We just have to alter the the definition in our minds and work towards some other healthy options of fast food. Mm -hmm. So a really easy example of having some fast food available in your home, this is one of the things that I do in my house. I buy like the box of pre-washed spring mix salad. There's nothing added to it. It's just lettuce that's been pre-washed and put in a box. That's right. And at the beginning of the week, I make up my own dressing for the week in a container and put it in the fridge. I have peppers chopped up and I have those baby cucumbers and so I can make myself a salad for lunch in literally one minute. It's faster than going through the drive-thru. <laughs> that is called fast food. Exactly. And it's so good for your body. The other thing you can do is when you're deciding that you're going to make some, say, whatever meat you want to choose, but say it's chicken, you can make extra chicken and you can have it in the fridge so it is fast and you can add a chicken piece to your salad. Exactly. Chop it up, have it ready to go. So literally all you have to do is open the container and put it, you, you can reheat it if you want, but you don't even have to put it on your plate and away you go. Right. That's right. That is the definition of fast food. So right? let's start to work towards changing our definition of fast food, meaning you're going through a drive through and have fast food readily available right at your fingertips in your own house. So really, if you want to start transitioning to making these healthier choices, because it's going to be beneficial for your health and your weight loss journey. That's right. What we want you to know is that it's going to take a shift in perspective because you're going to have to start thinking about planning. You're going to have to start thinking about prepping food. You're going to have to have a plan and you might be saying, I don't have time to do that. But we want to tell you that if losing weight and reclaiming your health are important to you, then you need to stop saying, I don't have time. And you need to start saying, how can I make time? And when can I do it? And I can do things that, you know, are fun while I'm prepping. Like you can put on your favorite show. You can put on your favorite music. You could listen to your Bible, your Bible devotion time if you have an audio one. There's so many things you can do while you're prepping. So you're, it just, the time flies by and you're having fun prepping your own fast food. Exactly. So I'm going to challenge you that next time when you go into the grocery store, have a look at what you put into your buggy. Yeah. Is it packaged foods? Is it really processed foods? Or are you buying foods that you can prep to make your own fast food? So if you're looking to learn how to add real food that's not going to take you forever to prepare and that actually tastes good, if you want to add that back into your life, then we want to invite you, and if you want to lose some weight, that's then we right. want to invite <laughs> you to check out our 10-day weigh down plan. It is an amazing plan that we developed. We say that God gave us this plan. It has helped me lose 150 pounds. It helped me lose 20. And it's helped thousands of other women shed the weight without being on a diet. And the foundation is learning to surrender this journey to God because we want to get back to like losing weight God's way. And I'm going to say it's going to teach you how to eat healthy foods that God has made for us to enjoy because our recipes are tasty and delicious and they're God-given foods mm -hmm. that are gonna fuel your body. And we don't eliminate any food groups, right? So you might be saying, well, then how do you eat bread? Well, there's way healthier versions of bread to buy, right? Like there's good, better, best, that's right? right? And that's there's right. actually bad, good, better, best, yeah, right? That's right. And so what we wanna do is we wanna look for the best options. And we explain so much of that in the 10-day weigh down plan. We're not gonna get into all those details here, but we keep the price point on that plan as low as we possibly can so that you can have access to it and so that you can learn how to lose weight without being on a diet. So we really encourage you to check it out. And we always like to end our videos by saying, Treat your body like a temple, not a trash can.